good good day everyone good day class today uh, we, will, we are going to uh, discuss the theory and concept of human rights um, as discussed in the book human rights education now what do you mean by human rights how do we define what human rights are human rights are rights that every person has as a consequence of being a human. So the moment that you are born, your human rights are also born with you. So the right is universal, meaning every person, regardless of uh, his gender, race, sex, religion, political view, and other differences, every person has his human rights and every person human every person's human rights are or should be respected so uh, there are seven characteristics of human rights number one it is inherent meaning from the time that a person is born uh, the human his or her human rights also is born with him or her second is it is an inalienable when you say it is inalienable, it cannot be taken away from that person. Third, it is imprescriptible. Human rights do not prescribe, meaning even if uh, you have been alive in this world for a long time, you still have your human rights because it does not have an expiration period. It is imprescriptible. Fourth, it is indivisible meaning it cannot be uh, divided it does not uh, it means that you can there is a guarantee that all the rights all your human rights can be enjoyed and then a fifth characteristic it is interdependent meaning the exercise of the right cannot be had without the realization of other rights meaning all all human rights are interconnected. They are interdependent. So, uh, the basic human rights is your right to life, your right to liberty, and your right to property. So, of course, how can you exercise your right to liberty or freedom or your right to own a property when you do not have your right to life? That is why all these human rights are interdependent. And then, as I have said, the human rights are universal meaning it is available to all human beings irrespective of gender race status um or your where you where you come from or the place you live the fact that you are a human it means that you have your human rights and of course it is fundamental when you say fundamental it is very very important it is uh without human rights our life and our dignity will be meaningless now what are the sources of human rights no where do we get the laws governing human rights now we have the customary international law or basically customs when we say customs it is a general practice in the international level and uh when we say custom it applies globally all around the world another source of human right is treaty law so there are treaties when you say treaty that is an agreement between countries between states uh, these are international agreements which provide human rights so we have different treaties covenants and conventions which are our sources of human rights now what are the uh, basic categories of human rights so there are actually four we have the civil and political rights which includes your right to life your right not to be tortured uh, your right to liberty meaning your right to be free so that is also uh, the right against slavery the freedom to move the freedom to vote that is and we voted upon 
that is your civil and political rights. Uh, we also have the second kind of category is we have the economic, social, and cultural rights. These are uh, your right to work, uh, your right to choose your employment, your right to uh, 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 adequate standard of living, your right to education, your right to health. So these are the economic, social, and cultural rights. The right to practice your culture. And then third, we have the solidarity or collective rights. That is your uh, that is the right to self determination, meaning the right of a group of people to consider themselves as a nation or as a group. The rights of indigenous peoples. So uh, we will discuss that later on. And then we have the uh, fourth kind is equality and non discrimination. So we all know that uh, not being discriminated that is a human right now uh, there are two main approaches to human rights we have the uh, philosophical approach and we have the pragmatic approach okay so uh, or there are two uh, yes when you say uh, philosophical approach it uh, human rights are viewed in terms of theories now in terms of theories now there are five types of five theories of human rights okay so what are these five types of theories you actually have that on your notes no so first we have the theory of natural right so when you say natural no? natural right it states there that the moment a person enters the society then there are then his or her human rights comes with him meaning uh under the natural under the theory of natural rights um Human rights are inherent within a person. Na anadaan, no? It already belongs to the person. And the moment that the person is born, human rights, his or her human rights is also born. So that is the natural rights theory. The second theory is the legal rights theory. When you say legal rights theory, according to this theory, human rights are created and maintained by the state. So different, no? So natural, natural rights theory, human rights are born with you. In the legal rights theory, human rights are created and maintained by the states. Meaning, it is not inherent, it is not natural upon the person, but it is created by the government. And then another theory is what we call the historical theory of human rights. When you say historical theory, it provides that rights are a result of history. So, lahi, no? natural, it is born with you. Legal theory, it is created by the state. Historical theory is uh, also posits that human rights is a result of history, customs that is passed from one generation to another. No? So that is the historical theory of human rights. And then fourth, we have the social welfare theory. So uh, according to the social welfare theory, uh, human rights are a condition of social welfare. So what is, what do we mean by uh, social welfare? No, uh, it is part of the customs, traditions, and nat natural rights of a person, which is conditioned by the society. No, it is the society who created human rights. No, so again, balik natural rights. It is created. Uh, 
your human rights comes from the moment that you are born. Legal theory, uh, human rights are created by the state, by the government. Third is historical theory. Human rights are a result of a uh, is a result of history, uh, part of the custom that is passed from one generation to another. And then number four, we have social welfare theory. It states there that human rights is created by the society. And lastly, we have the idealistic theory. So it states there that uh, human rights are there in order for a person. No, it is developed by a person in order to reach his full potential as a human. So those are the five theories of human rights, natural rights, legal rights, historical rights, uh, social welfare rights, and the idealistic theory of rights. Okay. Now, despite having a, uh, what do you call this? Despite having a definition that human rights is inherent to all persons, uh, it is viewed differently depending on a, on what society you live in. So there are three main views of human rights. We have the Western view, we have the Eastern view, and we have the socialist view. When you say Western, no, when you say Western, ah, there is a fourth one, ah, Western, Eastern, socialist, and religious, ah, religious view. When we say Western, uh, the West is composed of the Europeans and the uh, Americans or the white people. When we say Eastern view, that is the view of the Asians. Uh, the Asians. When we say socialist view, uh, this is the view of um, countries or people who practice socialism and Marxism. And of course, religious view, the view of the of each religion, not just the Catholic Church. Okay. Now, Western, no, the West, the whites, they believe that human rights are considered to be not permanent and have no eternal source or criteria. So, um, for the West, they they believe that. Uh, human rights are products of political and social conditions. No, so uh, the West they more they believe more on the legal theory that human rights are created by the state, and then uh, they also believe that the main purpose of human rights is to protect the people from the state protect the people from the state. However, in a Eastern view no, to Asians, uh, they believe that human rights are uh, part of religious duties. No? Uh, uh, human rights should be practiced because it is the dictate of religion. Because if you try to look at the Eastern view, you know, we have Confucianism, we have, we have Buddhism, we have Islam. Uh, we are more dominated by religion. Now, compared to the West, they are more liberal. They're more liberated. They do not focus on religion. So, again, for the East, now, for the Eastern view of human rights, they believe it is part of uh, the exercise of human rights and the protection of human rights is part of a religious duty. And then we have the socialist view of human rights. Uh, commonly, this is uh, 
practiced by um, Marxist states such as China and Russia. No? Uh, according to them, human right, uh, they do not really acknowledge no, the existence of uh, human rights because in a socialist community uh, or in a communist uh, community from the word communal from the word social they focus more on um, communities or the group as a whole rather than on uh, individualistic rights yeah so um uh, that is the socialist uh, view on, or yeah, socialist view of human rights. No, they focus more on the society and the community, not on the individuals. And of course, uh, under socialism, uh, the individual persons have a limited exercise on the right to property, and they don't uh, really believe that. Uh, Human rights are neither natural or essential to an individual. And then we go to uh, the religious view of human rights. Um, most of the religions really support uh, human rights. No, most, no, if not all. Uh, this includes uh, Hinduism, uh, Islam, um, Judaism, Zoroastrianism. So uh, these religions, they have they respect human rights, and according to them, human rights originate from the idea of mercy, kindness to others, and pity on human beings. So uh, it is not really natural in the person, but it originates because of the feelings of a person towards another person so those are the uh, four different views of the concept of human rights you have the western view of human rights again uh, which believes that uh, human rights are there to protect the people the eastern view of human rights which who believes that uh, human right the exercise of human rights and protection of human rights is a religious duty the socialist view of human rights, which uh, do not see human rights as important or fundamental to a person, and the religious view of human rights, which uh, states that uh, human rights are, uh, or they come from the kindness of, the kindness of person to another, it's the pity of pity on human beings to another human being. So those are the four views of human rights. Now we go to its origin. How did the human rights start? How did this start? Now, human rights originate as early as 539 to 530 BC, that is before Christ. During the reign of Cyrus II, who was the king of Persia. And uh, this king of Persia wrote in the Cyrus Cylinder the uh, human rights that we know now. So in this Cyrus Cylinder, he included that there should be racial equality, meaning there should um, races should be equal. There should be religious freedom. And these uh, reforms are included in uh, what we call as a Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And uh, the Cyrus Cylinder is the oldest evidence of existence of human rights as early as 539 to 530 BC before Christ. Following the Cyrus Cylinder, we have uh, the Magna Carta or known as the Great Charter during the reign of King John of England in 1215, in the year 1215. 
Now, in this Magna Carta or the Great Charter, it provided there that uh, all men, all free men, because there are still the existence of slaves, all free men, except the slaves, have the right to achieve justice and fair trial through the establishment of due process and equality. So that is what is in the Magna Carta. Second, it also established that the religion should be free from government interference. Uh, that the relig uh, religious groups should not be included no, in uh, that the government should not interfere or really mag appeal appeal when it comes to religious activities. It's also stated in the Magna Carta that citizens can own, free, free citizens can own and inherit properties. And they are protected from excessive tax. So, from the Cyrus Cylinder, we have the Magna Carta of the year 1215. And then there was also the Petition of Rights by King Charles I of England. Now, um, basically, uh, the petition asserted four principles. Number one, that the king cannot tax the people without the consent of the parliament or the government. Second, that no person shall be imprisoned without cause. Third, that no sh soldier shall be quartered within the city or public areas. And fourth, martial law shall not be implemented in times of peace. Now, this petition of rights also was created uh, within the same time frame of the Magna Carta. So, uh, if you try to look at the petition of rights, these are also rights that we now enjoy under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And then, um, lastly, we have the Bill of Rights created during the time that there was the government of the United States of America was established. The Bill of Rights of the American government is very close to what up to the Bill of Rights that we have now. So, the Bill of Rights under the U.S. government states that there should be protection to all citizens and residents, including visitors in the American territory. It also introduced the freedom of speech, you know, the freedom of speech, the freedom of the people to voice out their opinions. It also introduced the religious freedom the freedom to choose your religion and to practice your religion. Uh, the Bill of Rights of the U.S. government established that the government cannot deprive a person of his right to life, liberty, or property without due process of law, which is Section 1 of Article 3 of our 1987 Constitution. In the Bill of Rights also of the U.S. government, it states there that uh, an individual who commits a crime shall be indicted by a grand jury, meaning you are entitled to due process, you are entitled to a day in court, and you shall have a speedy public and impartial trial. So that is what is stated in the uh, U.S. Bill of Rights. Now, at present, we have the United Nations, which was created after World War II. Now, under the United Nations, uh, we now have the known Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is, um, what do you call this, practiced and acknowledged by all states all around the world. And then for the case of the Philippines, uh, we had our human rights you know, during the time that we were finally free from American colonialism on 1945. So basically that is the short 
History of Human Rights. At present, we now have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as I have mentioned. This is now considered the International Magna Carta or the International Rule for Human Rights. It is uh, generic in nature and it is adapted in all states in the world. So the Universal, of Declar the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was created on December 1948, specifically December 10, 1948. That is why December 10 is International Human Rights Day. Okay, so basically that is um, theory, concept, and history of human rights.